Hello, everyone. Welcome to the College Fair Magazine Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is gonna be just one of many different sessions that are happening today, so please be sure to sign up for more. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded and that recording is gonna be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash college fair magazine. All right, but now I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our presenters. And we are starting today with the University of Alabama. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Paul. Uh, just give me one moment, I'm gonna share my screen with everyone. Um, like, I, like I said before, my name is Chris Paul. I am the regional admissions uh, recruiter for Eastern Pennsylvania. Um, I work specifically for the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Um, I always make that distinction because there are two other campuses uh, in Alabama, um, but for the admissions process, uh, we are not connected. Uh, so it is just an application to Tuscaloosa. Uh, Tuscaloosa is a ideal college city. It's a small to medium sized city with a little over 200,000 people population. Um, it is a really great environment uh, with lots of great entertainment, uh, cultural activities, uh, nightlife. Um, also, it provides a lot of off campus resources for our students. Uh, most of our upper class students are living off campus. Um, so it, it is, a, is a really great option uh, for you to consider. Uh, in Tuscaloosa, our enrollment is a little over 38,000 total, and our undergraduate enrollment is a little under 33,000. Uh, what's unique about that number is 50% uh, of our undergraduates come from out of state. Uh, a lot of students are coming from the Northeast. You'll see that uh, New Jersey and New York are in our, our top 10, uh, and there also are a lot of students coming from the Pennsylvania area. Um, we represent all 50 states on campus, and we also have 76 uh, countries represented internationally. Uh, so it is a diverse campus environment uh, with lots of, of students pursuing different interests, uh, which I think is very dynamic. Uh, for academic interest, we have a little over 70 undergraduate degrees. And when you include the minors and um, concentrations, you're looking at about 200 degree possibilities. Uh, we are a uh, R1 Research University. Um, recently, the University of Alabama was uh, ranked in the top 10 of R1 research universities in the country. Um, that means that we have the highest activity level of research on a collegiate campus, and um, that does include undergraduate research opportunities, both for all of our undergraduates, and then there are some specific opportunities uh, related to our honors college. Um, another great thing about the University of Alabama is uh, campus life is very uh, active. Um, I think this is one of the most popular reasons why students come to the university. Um, we have over 650 student organizations on campus, uh, including the largest Greek life system in the country. Um, if you're interested in Greek life, it's a really great place to, to do Greek life, but it is only 30% of the students, so you don't have to do Greek life if you want to attend the university. Um, athletics is a big part of culture, uh, campus culture as well. Um, we are division one for athletics and we also do offer club sports and also intramural programs. Um, so you have opportunities with club sports to still travel and compete. Um, and then with the intramural programs, it's informal pickup games with both students and faculty. Um, a lot of our faculty will participate in the intramural programs, which I think is really cool because it gives students an opportunity to form friendships with their faculty outside of the classroom. Um, these are some of our notable alumni, or as we call them on campus, um, our legends. Uh, I think one of the uh, best things that the University of Alabama is able to provide students is uh, success with their outcomes. Uh, for internship opportunities, uh, we were named last year by Princeton Review to be the number two university in the country for internship opportunities. And we're also the number one SEC conference university for internships. We really encourage you to do professional development, not just during fall and spring semester, but also during summers. And the internship opportunities are not just limited uh, to Tuscaloosa and Alabama. Um, we are able to help students make connections all over the country. 
Um, also, after graduation, all of our alumni do receive lifetime access to career services. Um, I think that that's a really big distinction uh, because once you graduate, if you're ever changing jobs, if you're ever looking for new career opportunities, you're always going to be able to rely on the resources uh, that the university uh, provides. Uh, for the 2022 application, uh, we will continue to be test optional, and we are moving uh, towards a more holistic review. Uh, for scholarships, uh, we have two scholarships. One are the automatic scholarships, which are listed here. Um, so if you decide uh, that you do want to take an SAT or an ACT, you can submit that score uh, for consideration for these scholarships. Um, you would need to have the GPA and the test scores you see listed here to qualify for those scholarships. Um, we also do offer competitive scholarships uh, this year. The admissions application will also serve as an automatic application for those scholarships. Um, the important thing to keep in mind with competitive scholarships is the deadline is a hard deadline of January 15th. Uh, so students who apply to the university uh, before or by that deadline will be considered for those competitive scholarships. If you apply after January 15th, uh, then unfortunately you will not be uh, able to be reviewed for the competitive scholarships, but you still will have access to the automatic scholarships. Um, our application is opening on July 15th, and this year we will also be on the Common App for the first time. Uh, we're very excited about that, and our Common App application will be opening on August 1st. Uh, the campus is open for campus tours. Uh, we'll be open this summer, Monday through Friday. Uh, we have campus tours, and then we also offer in-depth visits. Um, so if you want to do a expanded visit opportunity, uh, please let me know, and I will be able to help you with those arrangements. Um, here's my contact information. I'm going to share this information in the chat as well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time today. And as we say in Tuscaloosa, roll tide. All right, thank you to the University of Alabama. And next up, we have the University of Delaware. Hello, share my screen now. Hello everyone, my name is Lovely Lacey. I'm from the University of Delaware. I'm an admissions counselor and I am also a Delawarean and I'm excited to share with you a little bit about University of Delaware today, especially in terms of the power of place. The reason that I like to talk about University of Delaware being an awesome place to be is one of our um, greatest things we have to offer is our centralized location in the mid-Atlantic. Um, in the mid-Atlantic, we're about 45 minutes away from Phila city of Philadelphia, about 20 minutes away from our the largest city in the state of Delaware, which is Wilmington, um, and about an hour and five minutes from Baltimore, hour and a half away from DC, and two and a half hours to three hours from New York City, depending on who's driving. Um, the reason I like to mention Wilmington is that uh, Wilmington is actually um, a very real um, has a very real possibility of uh, internships and jobs uh, after college. In terms of um, employment, Delaware is uh, employing um, Delaware University of Delaware graduates um, uh, second to one, uh, second to none. So uh, one of our largest employers is um, all of the is the um, is the state of Delaware. And um, a lot of Fortune 500 companies are actually headquartered here in Delaware. Um, actually, about a third of them are actually headquartered here. So it's a large place for opportunity for business and um, things like that. Uh, I also like to mention our beautiful campus and this bird's eye view. Uh, our beautiful campus has more uh, very much like a New England feel, we like to say, even though we're not New England, lots of brick and um, uh, brick pathways and green spaces. We also have a 350 acre farm that we love to showcase all of our 100 Holstein cows. Um, and we have a farm um, to table creamery, a UD, uh, it's called the U Dairy Creamery. And the student, it's the students actually run it and it's farm to table uh, ice cream. That is absolutely amazing. My favorite flavor is 1923. Uh, another, uh, some, one more 
thing about our campus is that um, we uh, we uh, will be open in the fall, and we like to highlight that um, so that students are aware of what our plans are for reopening. Um, we will be open in the fall um, with at, and we're hoping to be at full capacity. We also plan to be test optional um, for the next two years. Um, and then uh, we also like to mention our uh, Main Street, which is not necessarily a part of uh, our campus, but very connected where a lot of students like to hang out, has over 75 shops and restaurants, different places to, um, you know, uh, go out to eat with parents when they come for parents weekend, go to the post office if you need to, um, get groceries, go to the drugstore, all of those things are very much available to you. Um, and then I also like to highlight one of our most amazing things on our website is it's called our major finder. We have over 150 plus majors at the University of Delaware. And all of these majors are um, able to, uh, are searchable on our website by uh, alphabetically by college and even by interest area. Um, so uh, you could go on our website and perhaps look at the difference between um, uh, environmental science and environmental studies and see what those two actually are, right? See what environmental studies is and environmental science and kind of compare the two. It's a really cool tool, a really cool tool. <laughs> Um, and then um, one of our um, most, one of our flagship programs is wor the World Scholars Program. World Scholars is an awesome program where you can study abroad your first semester freshman year um, or your second semester freshman year. Your first semester freshman year, you can go to a couple of places, Italy, Australia, Spain, really exciting. We have sister institutions that we work with and um, most students study again for a second time their junior year as world scholars as well. University of Delaware invented study abroad. We popularized the, um, the, sub, the act of studying abroad back in 1923. And in terms of uh, one of my favorite stats for the University of Delaware, 95% of our 2019 bachelor's degree graduates are employed or pursuing further education within six months of graduating, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, you can check out our outcomes for each and every major um, on our website where you can see where each student from each major is going to um, graduate school, where they're getting jobs, what their salaries are like, um, and you can compare those. And if you have any other questions, um, you can go to udel.edu, apply today, um, and contact me on admissions at, at udel.edu. Thank you. All right, thank you so much to the University of Delaware. And next up, we have Edinburgh University. Hello, yes, I am Ariel Phillips. I'm an admissions counselor here at Edinburgh University. Uh, we are located in Erie, Pennsylvania, or excuse me, 15 minutes south of Erie, Pennsylvania. One of our great uh, attributes is we are two hours away from Cleveland, Ohio, Buffalo, New York, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So we're a nice little central location to those major cities. Just to give you a little bit of our dynamics, we are a smaller school. We have a little over 4,000 students with our undergraduate population making up for about 3,000. What this means is our student to teacher ratio is about 13 to one to 15 to one. Your uh, major academic classes are gonna have anywhere from like 25 to 30 people. And then your gen ed, you'll see anywhere from around 60 to 75. Uh, so what this means is you get to have great personal relationships with both your classmates and your professors. And this helps you both develop professionally and uh, academically with networking. Here at Edinburgh, we have 140 plus majors. Some of our bigger ones are gonna be within our art department. We have fine arts, studio arts, anything from woodworking to virtual world and game design to fine arts programs. We also have several pre-professional degrees like pre-med, pre-dental, pre-physical therapy. We have a fantastic communications department as well. 
Uh, we also have some of the social sciences looking at sociology, social work, political science. And then we have a fantastic nursing program, which we pride ourselves on, as well as being uh, one of the major institutions for Pennsylvania for education. Anything from early childhood, middle level, secondary, special education. And we do have several four plus one programs for you, which means you can get your bachelor's and master's in and out within five years. Some rave reviews for us. Again, we do have a fantastic nursing program. Uh, we pride on being one of America's best in the East. We have 100% NCLEX passing rate, 100% job placement rate for the past two years. Uh, we are top 13 in the nation for animation programs for public schools and universities. And again, uh, our education department, we are only one of three within the Pennsylvania system that are kept accredited. We are number five for game design schools and colleges in Pennsylvania. We have 25 award-winning graduate programs, again, in our business department, communication, social work, speech and language pathology. Uh, one of the big statistics is 90% of our graduates within a year of graduation are either in a job in their field or in a graduate program, uh, most with the average starting salary of 41,000. So as a 22-year-old, 41,000 is not too bad to start out with. Uh, here at Edinburgh, we also pride ourselves in having over 140 different clubs and organizations. Some of these include Greek life, uh, as well as 19 varsity sports. We have 16 uh, division two and one division one being our wrestling program. We also have a wheelchair basketball team and a huge esports community and team going on with that. So again, we like to say at Edinburgh, there's a little something for everyone. One of the other interesting things about our clubs and organizations is if there's a club that you would like to see on campus that you don't necessarily see, all you need is you and 10 other friends and you can start a new club here at Edinburgh. For housing options, we have two different ones. We have the traditional stereotypical as seen on TV college dorms, uh, where you have the communal bathrooms and things like that. One of the big caveats for that is it does have a pet friendly floor. So if you have a small cat or dog that you wanna bring with you, uh, we are a pet friendly campus. We also have, excuse me, our Highlands, which are our studio style housing. Uh, you have studios, suite, semi-suite. So it just depends on if you want your own private room, if you wanna share a room with one person, share a bathroom with one or share a bathroom with three. Another big thing that we have for our housing is our living learning community, which I highly encourage a lot of our freshmen to take advantage of. What this means is say you're a student who is an exercise science major or just enjoys healthy living there is a healthy living floor. So you can live with people in the same community that have the same study habits or the same curriculum that you're studying as well. So it kind of gets you both that academic network and that social network right from the start. We do guarantee housing for all four years. So that is something we pride ourselves on. So how do you apply for Edinburgh? Uh, our application actually opens up on our personal website on July 1. And then we are also on the Common App, which will be available August 1. There are a couple of deadlines to keep in mind. We are rolling admissions, but again, to make sure you're getting the best opportunities for you and the best financial aid options as well, there are a couple of deadlines you want to keep in mind is moving forward with applying. To complete an application, all you need to do is complete the online application. Uh, there is a $30 application fee, but for attending either a virtual visit or visiting us here on campus, we do offer a fee weaver code, which is on the screen for you. Uh, also, all you need is your official high school transcript. And if you are a transfer student who takes uh, classes at another institution, we will need those college transcripts for us for you. We are also moving with the test optional option. So you, it is not required for you to take your SAT or ACT to be considered for admissions, but it can help you as well when it comes to looking at those scholarship options. Uh, for freshmen, we do offer merit-based scholarships, which come straight with the application when you apply, uh, anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000. So again, there's some of our big numbers for us. It's around 22 for in-state, 26 for out-of-state, depending on what you choose for room and board. And if you have any questions, there is my contact information for you. Uh, again, thanks for visiting Edinburgh. All right, thank you so much to Edinburgh University. And next up, we have Elizabethtown College. Good.
Good. Um, morning, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Oz. I'm going to talk about how to become a Blue Jay. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Elizabethan College. We are located in Lancaster County, which is an hour and a half away from the city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Uh, so by the numbers, a student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. So you will get that personalized attention that you're looking for. We have 58 undergraduate majors. So there's always something for every student. 24 sports, we're division three. We have over 100 clubs and organizations here on campus. So we have like an anime club, Pokemon, religious clubs, political clubs. There will be some, always something for every student. We have about 1,600 students, about 425 students per class. We're consistently ranking the top 100 private colleges in the US. Our average class size for an intro course is 17, but as you move forward into your program, it's gonna be less than 12. And our campus is about 204 acres of campus. It's a pretty walkable campus. Here are the majors and minors that we have. It's over 150 of them. So there will be some, always something for you. Our main programs are our business program, engineering, music therapy, and our education program, as well as our occupational therapy program. In order to graduate, you have to do what we call signature learning experiences. There's five of them, you only have to do two. The first one is supervised research. So you get to do research with a faculty member for a whole semester. The second one is an internship experience. And we have great companies here. The most famous one would be the Hershey Company out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, which is only 25 minutes away. Cross-cultural experiences, you can study abroad. We have over 100 countries, 500 programs. You can go for a whole year, two to six weeks or a whole semester. We have community-based learning. You get a chance to work with a nonprofit. Examples include Habitat for Humanity, United Way. And we have a capstone course, which is everything that you have learned from your freshman year all the way down to your senior year. 85% of our students live on campus and the rest are commuters. We have Hackman apartments where you get to live on an apartment by yourself. And we have a quads where you live on a suite or a townhouse and you get to share a house with three or four people. And we also have traditional residence halls. Getting involved on campus, like I said, we have 12 courses for female, 12 courses for male. Uh, we have over 100 clubs and organizations here. And we also have esports. So if there's any gamers out there, we have Fortnite, Overwatch, and uh, World of Warcraft. We have a new bar centers for sports, fitness, and well being. They include group fitness rooms, multi purpose room, an indoor track, an outdoor track, a smoothie bar, a relaxation room where we have these little white pods where students are allowed to take uh, power naps. The employees of Facebook and Google has them. We have outdoor fire pits, we have a lounge with fireplaces, and you will be able to use this at all times. We have an honors program, we have an honors college inside the college. Less than 20% of our students are invited to this. You got a stipend of up to $5,000. You have to do 24 honors credits. And in order to be on our, one of the program's requirements is a student has to have a 3.5 in their high school, uh, as well as show some leadership potential. The application process is really simple. There is no application fee. We're in the Common App, we're in the eTown App. Uh, SATs or ACT scores are not optional. We need a school report, a teacher recommendation, and a writing sample. We usually take two to three weeks to read applications, and you have until May 1st usually to make your final college decision. Uh, the application is live, will be live for any potential seniors in July, but there is still time to apply for fall 2021. Every student that comes to Eton gets a scholarship no matter what. So right now, if a student gets has a 3.5 GPA or higher, they will get the presidential scholarship, which is $17,000 per year. If a student has between a 3.0 to a 3.49, they will get $14,000. And if a student has between a 2.5 to a three, they will get $12,000. We have other scholarships as well. So we have a music performance scholarship. We have a scholarship for students that are interested in diversity and social justice. And the FAFSA comes live October 1st and 98% of our students receive federal aid. If you take an AP courses, uh, we, you can transfer them in. We take the four or the five. We take IV courses, and we also take dual enrollment courses, 100 level or higher. Um, you can come into campus. We're open for business. We were, we were open the whole last year. Um, you know, if you've been fully vaccinated, you can come in without a mask. 
You can come in for a day, Monday through Saturday. You can come in for junior visit days. Uh, we have an overnight program where students can stay overnight. We have open houses, we have virtual visits. So if you're from far away uh, and you wanna do a tour virtually, we have that option as well. Uh, here's the admissions team. I'm in the top uh, right, there is my email and my phone number. If you have any questions, I will be more than happy to help you, but thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Elizabethtown College. And next up we have Keene University. All right, hi everybody, thank you so much. I'm gonna just share my screen really quick. My name is Erin Fitzgerald. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Keene. Uh, and we are located up in Union, New Jersey. So we are about 20 minutes from New York City by train, about half an hour if you're driving and about an hour and a half to two hours from Philadelphia, depending on how fast you're driving. Once again, um, I fly up and down the turnpike pretty quick. So our campus in Union, New Jersey is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I do wanna highlight some of the more recent buildings that we have on campus. So up in the top left, we have Heinz Hall and that is home to our business and public management majors. It just opened up this past fall. It's an absolutely gorgeous building. We have a Bloomberg room with business intelligence software. Uh, and we also have a rooftop deck. We have smart technology. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different spaces that students can go and collaborate in there as well as really intense resources for students who are looking to study business or public management. Then over in the middle right, right there where those three students are, um, this is an image of our STEM building or students in our STEM building. Um, this is home to our honors college for all of our STEM majors like biotechnology and biomedicine. And something really unique about this building is we actually have biotech startup companies come and rent out space here and the students can go and intern with those biotech companies. So they're getting research experience as early as their freshman year, and then the biotech companies are getting lab space. So these are uh, all of our majors. We do have a whole bunch of different concentrations. Um, everything in blue is home to our STEM program. So those are going to be those five-year honors level programs. Um, and they do also have a teacher component as well. So you could be a you know, biology teacher and get your master's in your fifth year to be a teacher. Um, and anything with an asterisk next to it, so a little star, can be paired with an education major. We were a teacher's, uh, founded as a teacher's college, and now we've expanded, but education is still something that we take very seriously. We do have four different campuses, three within New Jersey, and then we also have our very own China campus. So we are the only public institution in the country to have a fully English-speaking satellite campus in China. And this is really huge because it allows students to go and study abroad and kind of learn a little bit outside of their comfort zone while still staying on budget. Because this is a satellite campus, it's the same exact tuition and fees as studying in New Jersey. Um, so it's a really, really cool opportunity for students. As far as what you can do on our Union campus, as well as our other two Jersey campuses, there's a lot going on. We have 14 different Division III varsity sports. We also have a lot of spaces for students to come together and kind of have fun. You know, there's more to college than just academics. Um, like a lot of other my, the other schools that came before me said, we have something for everybody. Um, we have over 160 different clubs and organizations, everything from theater um, to robotics to social justice clubs and everything in between. We also have really big interactive uh, spaces modeled after Google Studios in our library for students to work together on projects and just studying for classes. As far as the steps to apply to enroll, I do want to go over those quickly. We do operate on rolling admissions, so there is still time to apply for fall 2021. However, I do want to gear this a little bit towards the juniors in the room. So if you are going to be coming in and applying next fall, our application goes live on August 1st. We do also accept the Common app. Um, but something nice about applying with the Kane University app is that you can use a fee waiver code. Everyone likes free stuff, right? So if you apply next fall, you can use the code KIST2021 um, for this year and 2022 for next year, excuse me. So basically it's just the year that you graduate. As far as what you need, um, we are continuing on as a test optional university. If you do have your SAT and ACT scores, you can send them to us. We'll use them as additional information on your application, but they're not necessary at all. Um, you can just send us your high school transcripts, two letters of recommendation, and that essay. Um, we do also have lots of arts programs. So if you're interested in theater, you're going to be doing an audition. If you're interested in architecture or graphic design, you'll also have to turn to portfolio. So those are some additional pieces to the puzzle when you're thinking about applying. I do wanna talk about financial aid for a second as well. One of Kane's three pillars is affordability. The three things that Kane is most known for is our location, affordability, and diversity. 
And financial fit is a big piece of the puzzle when you're thinking about college. So we do award over 90% of our students some kind of aid, whether it's merit or need-based aid. So definitely make sure you fill out that FAFSA and send it over to us if you are going to be applying. We do have merit-based scholarships that start at $1,000 and range all the way up to full in-state tuition and fees. We also have specialty scholarships for students who are very active in their community and for art, um, fine art and architecture as well. We do also have something called foundational scholarships. Uh, these stack on top of your regular scholarships. So students are really able to get their best bang for their buck here. So they're getting this amazing education um, and graduating with 32% less debt than the national average. So we're very, very proud of the fact that we're able to get our students out into the world without having this huge ball of student debt following them around. As far as our tuition, we show it right up front. Um, we're not afraid to, to show everybody what we're all about. So as you can see, um, most of you are gonna be coming from out of state. So we do also offer an out of state scholarship as well. It's $4,000 a year, and that will bring you back into in-state tuition and fees range. If anyone has any questions, I'm gonna drop the, my contact information into the chat. So definitely feel free to reach out to me. Um, our campus is also gonna be open for business as well and open for visits this summer. So come see us, thank you. All right, thank you so much to Keene University. And that was actually our last presenter today, but we still have a little more time. So I do wanna invite all of our presenters to um, maybe turn their cameras back on so we can do a little Q&A session. Um, so let me pull up the questions here. And the first question I wanna ask all of you is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, and we'll go ahead and start with the University of Alabama. Um, so my advice uh, to you would um, be to set up a dedicated email account uh, for your college interactions. Um, you are going to be receiving a lot of information uh, for the various colleges uh, that you're looking at. Um, and it's important to keep that information separate uh, so you're able to, to get all the important information about scholarships, about your application, and not get that confused uh, with your general email or, or your school email. And how about University of Delaware? Oh, might not be with us. Let's go ahead and go to Edinburgh University. Okay, so some advice I would give is just to make sure you're doing your research, um, figure out what kind of institution you wanna be at. Do you wanna be in a city setting? Do you wanna be in a campus setting? Uh, just figuring out what's important to you, uh, making sure that you have options. So we all know that students change their majors quite frequently. So make sure that both your plan A and plan B are available at your institution and that they're going to be there to help you make options that are best for you um, so that we can get you in and out in that short period of time that we have you. Thanks. And how about Elizabethtown College advice for students going through the college search process? I will advise them to ask questions. Uh, there is no such thing as a stupid question. And uh, we love answering them. Our tour guides love answering questions. So ask as many questions as, as you want during tours and during your visits. And Keen? Uh, my advice would be to think beyond just the academics. This is going to be your home for the next four or five years. You want it to be somewhere you can thrive as a person, not just a scholar. So once you find a bunch of schools that have the academic program you're looking for, look at the other things they offer, what kinds of clubs and organizations you're interested in, look at the setting, um, so you, you get a more full experience. Awesome. A lot of great advice there. And uh, I've heard from the University of Delaware, they're having some issues getting their audio to work. So um, if, if we can get that get uh, back up, then we will definitely hear from them as well. But let's go ahead and, and look at the next question here. Uh, and that is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And uh, again, we'll go with the University of Alabama. Uh, so uh, after a uh, move-in occurs, um, we have uh, a period which is known as uh, Freshman Welcome Week and a big event that is part of that three day period before classes start is our Get On Board Day. Get On Board Day is a showcase of all of our student organizations on campus. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, we have over 650 opportunities uh, for students to get involved. Um, so this is a really great event um, to just meet everyone who's already involved in the events, 
or excuse me, with the organizations, uh, figure out what organizations you might be interested in. Um, I think for the size university, um, the uh, student organizations provide really great experiential opportunities and opportunities for you, you to really focus on your individual interest and also building smaller communities in Tuscaloosa and, and beyond after graduation. Um, so I, I'm really proud of this event and, and I think it's, it's one of the, the best opportunities we have early uh, for you to know everything that is available at the university. Awesome. Uh, I think we might have the University of Delaware back with us. So if you want to tackle that question, uh, favorite event or tradition on campus? Hi, can you hear me? We can, yes. Awesome, thank you so much. A uh, favorite tradition on campus of mine is, I would say um, the when you're a senior, when you graduate, you're supposed to jump in our big fountain to make sure that you graduate on time in four years. Um, and campus security doesn't always like when you jump in the fountain, but I will say, um, I didn't get caught and I graduated on time. So I feel like people should just go for it and do it. Um, that, that's one of my favorite traditions. Very cool. How about Edinburgh? Um, at Edinburgh, we are a Scottish heritage. So you'll see the tartan plaid behind me and things like that. Uh, one of the big events that we have are called the Highland Games. So we have traditional Scottish games like lifting the giant boulder, um, doing like marathons, things like that. So it is a great time. We have a kilted mile where you're running the mile in a kilt around campus. So again, it's entertainment. Uh, we also have, of course, stereotypical homecoming, which we have a huge alumni presence. So we have great networking, things like that for prospective students, current students with our alum. So there's always something entertaining and exciting going on there. Awesome. How about Elizabethtown? Uh, for us, will be our Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, every year, the faculty and the staff gets together in the big dining hall, and we serve the dinner to the students. So it's a way of thanking them for uh, choosing E-Town, and it's a great way to uh, foster those relationships in a small campus community. Yeah, very cool. And Keen? So during our freshman welcome week, we have a day that's dedicated to like the Jersey Shore. Uh, so our main drag, which is like Cougar Walk, is all like decked out with all the food and the games and all the entertainment that you would find um, on the shore. There's like tarot card reading and slot machines. Like there's all kinds of cool stuff happening. Uh, and that's a really great way to welcome students who are from out of state to Jersey as well. Awesome. All those sound pretty fun. Uh, let's go ahead and do just one last question here to wrap things up. Uh, can you give an interesting or fun fact about your school? And again, University of Alabama will kick us off. So um, the, the name uh, of Crimson Tide um, came from a football game that was played against our rivals Auburn uh, in 1907. Um, this game was held in Birmingham and the field itself was an iron rich soil. Um, so it had a very deep red color. Um, at the time, our, our uniforms were all white, um, but because of the mud, uh, the uniforms got stained uh, with, with the red. And also, uh, we came from behind uh, uh, to win the game. Um, so it was said that uh, our team played like a Crimson Tide. And ever since that day, um, we have been formally known as the Crimson Tide. Very cool. How about the University of Delaware? Hi, can you repeat the question? Oh yeah, sorry. It's, uh, can you give an, uh, one interesting or fun fact about your school? Okay, that's what I thought. So for us, one thing that I um, love to mention about the University of Delaware is that um, we actually um, popularized the, um, the traditional study abroad as people know it today. So back in 1923, Raymond Kirkbride, he was a professor, um, took 12 students to Paris, France. Um, and they went by boat. So there's that. We don't necessarily go by boat anymore, but um, they went by boat and they studied at a sister institution that we still work with till this day. And um, they came back and their, their credits in a sense, their credits in a sense uh, transferred, which is um, part of what the traditional study abroad experience is like. 
um, and it was just for a semester long. Um, so because of that, we have a very robust study abroad program and we go to six continents. We used to go to Antarctica, but there's not a lot of interest in Antarctica. So if you come to UD and you wanna go to Antarctica, just let one of the professors know. The, the professor that goes to Antarctica, he loves to go. So I'm sure he'd go back. <laughs> Awesome. Quite a few interesting facts, in fact. Uh, how about Edinburgh? All right. So with Edinburgh, again, I said one of our biggest majors is going to be our art department. Um, with the art department, we've had some fantastic alumni. So one of my favorite buildings to go to is called Wiley, and it has a bunch of different movie posters in it. And they're all movie posters that our alum have worked on. So anything from The Lion King, um, we've had an alum who works for DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, South Park Studios. And right now, one of the most notable alum got to actually work with Star Wars. So he helped with the development of The Mandalorian, which has become super popular with Baby Yoda. Uh, so it's been neat to see different things. And then we have several professors who work on different personal projects that stream in our theater that we have in the Student Center. So like that's been something really neat to see at Edinburgh. Very cool. How about Elizabethtown? So every year, the soccer team competes in the marshmallow game. So there is a rivalry with our nearby college, Messiah College. 30 years ago, the coach called their defense marshmallows. So now every year when Messiah and Etown play, uh, the both um, students from both schools throw marshmallow at the players uh, at any time during the game. Usually we try to keep the game before it gets cold, otherwise the marshmallows will freeze and they will hurt the athletes, but we try to do it early on the season. I don't think I've heard of that one before. That's pretty interesting. And how about Keen? Uh, so one interesting fact about Keen is we are very big um, like for historical things. So Keen is actually named for the Keen family who are kind of big wigs during the Revolutionary War. And when they were renovating the building this past year to the museum in that house now, they found a few cases of 200 year old Madeira wine that was actually going to be served to General Washington and his crew um, when they came through. You know, so he was gonna you know, chat about everything going on. So that's a really cool thing about, about us. And we were all really excited about our $15,000 bottles of wine that we're never getting rid of. <laughs> Wow, that is cool. That's, that's some of the most interesting uh, group of facts that I think I've heard in one of these sessions. Very, very cool. A lot of interesting schools there. Um, but that does actually take us right to the end of our session today. So I do want to say thank you to all of our presenters for telling us a little bit more about your institutions. And thanks to everyone for joining us too. When you close this window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey, and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted. Uh, there will be more later today. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash collegefairmagazine. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good rest of the day.